say Senator Sims. <laughs> Thank you, Mr President. This bill aims to end discrimination under the Marriage Act by finally legislating for marriage equality in this country. This has been a long road to equality for same-sex couples, but, there has well and but the time has well and truly come for the parliament to resolve this matter and to recognise that just as love does not discriminate, neither should our law. When my colleague uh, Sarah Hanson Young first put this bill to the Parliament back in 2008 on behalf of the Greens, momentum for marriage equality was building in this country. Since that time, momentum has continued to build, and we had an opportunity then in Australia for us to be leaders to support the growing international movement for equality. But unfortunately now we are on the wrong side of history with countries like Ireland and the United States this year joining the mounting list of nations around the world in support of marriage equality. We're not just at risk of lagging behind, we are well and truly behind and we need to catch up. Indeed, I note that on Monday Australia was subject to some criticism and rightly so on the international stage when members of the 23rd session of the Human Rights Council's Universal Periodic Review considered Australia's human rights record. Iceland, Ireland and the Netherlands all identified the need for Australia to take action on this issue and they did so within their reports. So this parliament is lagging severely behind the international community, but it's also lagging behind the community that we are elected to represent. Poll after poll shows that this reform not only enjoys majority support here in Australia, but support from a sizeable majority of the community. Indeed, 72 per cent of Australians support marriage equality, according to the latest Crosby Texter poll. Year after year, poll after poll shows that Australians support this. And as thousands continue to march for equality in our nation, it is clear that this movement will not be silenced. The community is looking to the parliament to take action. It's looking to the parliament to legislate within, for this reform, and it is in our power to do so. That's why, that's why, Mr Acting Deputy President, this insistent that we need a plebiscite is so frustrating and, quite frankly, insulting to gay, lesbian, bisexual and transgender people in our country and their families and their friends. John Howard didn't need a plebiscite back in 2004 when he legislated to make it expressly clear that marriage could only be between a man and a woman. At that time, I didn't hear Conservatives up in arms, taking to the airwaves, jumping up and down, saying that this issue was so fundamental to democracy in our country that we needed a plebiscite. It was so complex we needed to have a hugely expensive opinion poll to deal with the matter. Yet apparently, when we're looking at removing discrimination, when we're looking at getting rid of that kind of homophobia, then the matter is so complex that it needs to go to some kind of plebiscite. Apparently it's in the too hard basket and it's too complex for this parliament to deal with matters of discrimination and love in that way. Well, we don't accept that. What a slap in the face that is to same-sex couples in this country and what a slap in the face it is to all Australians who believe in fairness and equality. We recently had a Senate inquiry looking into this matter of a plebiscite and it found that it was going to be very costly very costly indeed, and potentially damaging to members of the lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender community. Indeed, it would cost almost $160 million to hold a plebiscite outside of an election. That's the advice of the AEC. $160 million to ask a question we already know the answer to. At a time when there are huge demands on the national budget, can anyone seriously suggest can anyone seriously suggest that we should be spending more than $100 million of taxpayer funds on asking a question we already know the answer to? Do Australians support marriage equality? Well, Mr Turnbull and Mr Morrison, the Greens can save you some money as you go to craft your next budget. The answer is yes. Yes, Australians do support this reform and they want to vote in the parliament so that we can get it done. 
The other thing that really concerns the Greens about this plebiscite approach is the implications for young same-sex attracted people, and these were canvassed within the recent Senate inquiry. And Acting Deputy President, we should make no mistake that homophobia is still a big issue in our country. It's still a very big issue. And growing up, dealing with those kind of issues can be a difficult thing for young people here in Australia. It's an isolating time, it's a very frightening time. And I know I've been in that position myself. And the last thing I want is for other young people to go through that. The last thing I want is to see taxpayer money being spent on a divisive campaign against marriage equality, what in effect would become a state-sanctioned, state-funded hate campaign. A hate campaign that would be levelled against gay and lesbian and transgender people and their families and their friends. And make no mistake, this is a campaign that would come. There is a very small but vocal hate lobby in this country. They have a lot of money and they're very good at creating a lot of misery, fanning the flames of unhappiness and division in this country. They peddle lies, they peddle misinformation and they promote hatred and division. And as an Adelaide City Councillor, I experienced their wrath firsthand when earlier this year I dared to propose painting a strip of rainbow in the CBD to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the decriminalisation of homosexuality in my home state of South Australia. One would think a positive initiative that we should be celebrating. But as a result of this proposal, I received some truly revolting, hateful emails levelled at myself and my council colleagues. There were some utterly bizarre suggestions that rainbows are somehow dangerous to children that the very exposure to a rainbow would somehow expose children to some form of post-traumatic stress. I mean, these kind of absurd claims give clutching at straws a whole new meaning. But it's an example of the desperation and the lengths that these groups will go to to oppose marriage equality and to oppose progress in this country. In the city of Marion, residents' letterboxes were bombarded with homophobic filth after the council voted to fly a rainbow flag over its council chambers to promote the Gay and Lesbian Festival that's coming up this week in Adelaide. This is the same kind of nonsense, Acting Deputy President, that for many years has tormented South Australians on the streets of Adelaide as they go about their daily business. The so-called street preachers, who think that it's somehow OK to carry signs that equate homosexuality with murder and rape. They have even carried these signs at uh, gay and lesbian festivals and events, standing with megaphones, shouting and berating at people and telling us that we're going to go to hell. Ugly hate speech. Imagine what these kind of bigots, these kind of hate merchants will do if they get their hands on taxpayer funds to run a campaign against marriage equality. Imagine what they will do. I'm scared about the harm that this will cause. I don't want to subject young people to that. I remember attending my first ever um, feast festival, which, as I mentioned, starts uh, this weekend in Adelaide. It's been an ongoing part of the social calendar in my state. I attended my first one when I was in my early 20s, and I remember seeing those street preachers standing there carrying signs that said that gay men were akin to murderers and rapists. It's hard not to be wounded by that. Let's consider for a moment the kind of impact that that kind of thing would have on a young person who is scared or confused dealing with their own sexuality. I don't want that kind of disgusting homophobia to go national. The human rights of the lesbian and gay and transgender community in this country shouldn't be tied to a national opinion poll. It's wrong to do that. It's wrong to do that when we have the power to change the law without subjecting people to that kind of debate. Mr President, of course the truly sad thing about this debate is that we spend so much time talking about the process that we sometimes forget what it's all about. Ultimately, this shouldn't be a discussion about uh, complicated processes and procedures. It's a debate about love and equality. 
It's about real people and it's about their stories. And I'm reminded here of my good friends, Ben and Ian, who I've known for many years. In fact, I met uh, my friend Ben when I was at university. We were at law school together. And their story is similar to that of many uh, straight friends that I know who are now married. Ben was working at uh, JB Hi-Fi in Adelaide when he met Ian, who came in as a customer in the store. Um, well, I guess it's fair to say that a romance blossomed and um, they developed a relationship. And they've been through various stages in their lives together and they're now living in Melbourne. More, uh, more than 10 years on, they are, in all intents and purposes, like a married couple. But of course they can't get married and they're denied the opportunity to have their love and commitment celebrated before their friends and family. And certainly over the last 10 years I've been to many marriages of, of close friends, heterosexual friends who've been able to get married. It is galling when you see a couple like Ben and Ian who are denied the same opportunity. And there's no reason for this other than brazen discrimination in this country. We need to do better than that. Why are we denying couples like Ben and Ian the opportunity to have their love and commitment celebrated in front of their family and friends? Why are we denying that in 21st century Australia? This isn't just an issue that impacts directly on those couples that want to get married, but it's also a much bigger issue of fairness and equality in our country. I talked in my first speech about the experiences that I had growing up as a gay man. And since I did that speech, I've received a lot of positive messages from young people talking about their own journey with sexuality. And they told me that, that the, um, me sharing my experience helped them. Um, and so it's a reminder to me that the work that we do does have a positive impact. And we can choose here in this place to send a message of love and hope by supporting marriage equality. And I know that that will have a big impact. Mr President, I'm proud to stand here as a member of a political party that supports marriage equality in this parliament. The Greens support marriage equality every vote, every time. I commend this bill and I encourage the Chamber to join with the Greens in supporting it so that we can finally make marriage equality a reality in this country.